So I switched to a top view, looking straight down on top of the cavity, and I zoomed up on that channel where the extra stock is. I'm going to click on this scallop toolpath so I don't have to see any of the toolpath lines. And what I want to show you is how to create some wireframe geometry from these edges. And we're going to use that to create some kind of a boundary to contain our next toolpath. Before I start creating geometry, I want to select a different color. I'm going to pick this orange color. Another thing I like to do is in my attributes, I like to make sure that I'm using a thicker line width. just makes it easier to visualize. And now I want to create some curves on one edge. And I want to contain this area in here. So I'm going to pick this edge. I'm going to pick the same edge on the other side. I'm going to pick this boundary over here. And it doesn't matter if you pick this one or this one. And then I'll pick an edge over here. And that's all I need. Now, a lot of times people would say, well, I'm going to pick all the edges that make up the boundary. Pick all of this stuff. And you can do that, but in some cases, you may not get something that's completely closed. And you may not want it to be that exact shape. I just need this edge as a top, bottom, left, and right boundary. And I'm going to OK this. Now I'm going to go to my level manager, and I'm going to turn off my solid, so I'm only looking at this geometry. Now if I analyze this, and say Analyze Entity, it's going to tell me that these are NURB splines. And what I want to do is create geometry from that. I want to use some geometry that's a little bit simpler. So I'm going to go to a 2D geometry construction, and I want to set my Z height. Now, real quick, I'm going to turn my solid back on, and I'm going to set my Z to whatever this height is up here. Now I'm going to turn that solid back off. So with that Z level set for 2D geometry construction, I'm going to create some new geometry. I'm going to say create a line that goes from here to here. And I'll do another one that goes from here to here. Now they're the same color and they're on top of each other. But don't let that bother you because we put them at different Z heights. It'll be easier to select one over the other. So let me OK that for lines. Now I want to create some arcs. So I'm going to go to my arc pull down and I want to create a three point arc. What I'm going to do is grab the end point, the midpoint, and then the end point here. And I'll do the same thing over here end point, midpoint, and that point. And we'll OK that. Now I want to get rid of those splines. So I'm going to say delete. I'll go to my only selection and tell it only splines. OK. Now it says select entities. So I'm going to put a window around everything. And even though the arcs are inside the window, it's not going to delete the arcs. It's only going to delete the splines. So now if you do an analyze again, entity, you'll find that this is a line, this is an arc, line, and arc. Now we can trim all this together. So I'm going to go to my fillet command and tell it I want a fillet radius of a quarter inch and I want to blend between this and this. Maybe I'll make that a little bit smaller. So for this next fillet, I want it to be between this line and this arc, this line and this arc, and then this arc and this line. So now we have a containment boundary. We go to my level manager, turn my cavity solid back on, OK that. So that's going to be the containment boundary for our next toolpath. Now the toolpath I want to do is going to be a simple 2D pocket. I'm going to pick 
this chain. Let me switch back to wireframe. Pick my boundary. So we're doing a pocket. For my tool, I'm going to grab a quarter inch flat end mill, even though that's not what we're going to use later on. We want the diameters to be the same. And I'm not even worried about the feed rates. For my cut parameters, no stock on the walls or floors. For my roughing, I want to do a parallel spiral and I want my step over to be about 6%, so a 15,000 step over. I want to spiral from the outside to the inside and I'm not really worried about anything else except maybe I'll give it some kind of a depth, I'll say minus 0.1, but even that won't really matter. Now we're going to OK this and there's our pocket projected onto that area. Now I'm going to move my pointer up here on top of my hybrid. So this is where I'm going to insert my next toolpath. And what we're going to do is toolpaths, surface high speed, project. Now select the surfaces that you want to machine. I'll pick the entire model again. Enter to end my selection. For my containment boundary, I'm going to be picking wireframe and I'll pick this boundary again although I probably don't need it because I'm still only projecting the toolpath I created. OK this. So our toolpath type is project. The tool we're going to use, well I want to use a quarter inch ball end mill. So I don't have one, so I'm going to say select library tool, filter, show me ball end mills, and I'll grab a quarter inch ball. For my comment, I'll say finish the channel. We'll go to our cut parameters. Now we can take multiple depth cuts going down, but we don't have that much stock, so we don't have to worry about that. We could leave stock on the surface, but we don't need to do that either. We want to go right to the finished surface. And then here we tell it which toolpath we want to project. And I want to project that pocket toolpath that we just did. There's really nothing else to tell it except maybe our linking parameters. We're going to set that to point 0.1 and we're going to OK this. So if I switch this to an isometric view and zoom into that area, we can see that that toolpath has been projected right over the middle of that channel. Now you want to see something really cool? Let's say we wanted a bigger area. I'm going to go to Transform, Offset, contour. I'm going to pick my chain. I want to move the original out a hundred thousandths. We're going to OK this and I'm just going to say regenerate all the dirty operations. Well I think because it was out of order it didn't do one of these. Let me regenerate this dirty operation and now it's projected the new 2D pocket into that area again. So at this point we can go into the parameters for our stock model, go to our source operations, and we want to add this projected toolpath. So I can hold down my control key, pick that to add it to this list, OK here, and regenerate the stock model. So that looks like it cleaned up pretty well. Again, we can roll that over a little bit and see just how clean it is. So that's how you can take any 2D toolpath and project it down onto a 3D surface. This is a really handy feature. That should take care of everything we need to do with this cavity. Of course, you could change your step over for some of these cleanups or add additional toolpaths to get some of these edges. And I strongly encourage you to play with some of the toolpaths and the parameters and even change some of the tools if you like.